हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू एनपीटीएल ऑनलाइन सर्टिफिकेशन कोर्स ऑन फंडामेंटल्स ऑफ फूड प्रोसेस इंजीनियरिंग टुडे वी विल डिस्कस द थर्मल प्रोसेसिंग एंड कानेटिक्स ऑफ माइक्रोबायल डेथ इन द प्रीवियस क्लास वी हैव डिस्कस दैट हाउ द प्रोसेसिंग and the heat transfer can be done when we use thermal processing treatment for food preservation and we have seen that how unsteady state kinetics can be used to determine the time which is required for heating the food materials during thermal processing so today we will see what are the various thermal processings available so in that thermal processing uh, because we know that all the thermal treatment that we will going to learn in this chapter will be used for preservation purpose so it includes blanching pasteurization and sterilization and canning after that we will discuss the kinetics of microbial death in that what is the rate constant and how the change of microbial count varies with time during thermal treatment that will be discussed in detail we will also discuss the d value that is the decimal reduction time f value that is the total process time z value that is the temperature dependence of microbial destruction rate q10 value and also the l value that is the lethality and finally we will do the process calculation by different method and also will solve certain numerical problems so the first thermal processing we will discuss is blanching then we will move on to pasteurization and then sterilization but before going to the detailed discussion of all such methods first we will see what are the importance of these thermal treatment in the preservation of food so the purpose of this thermal processing is first to reduce or destroy microbial activity so that is the prime importance of thermal processing given to food for preservation next is to reduce or destroy enzyme activity apart from this we may also give thermal processing some time to produce physical or chemical changes to make the food meet a certain quality standard for example gelatinization of starch and denaturation of protein to produce edible food gelatinization of starch this happen during the hydrothermal treatment that we give to paddy that is called parboiling and it also change the appearance of uh the kernel the rice kernel okay and it's a desirable change and similarly denaturation of protein is also a desirable change that is being done by thermal processing so first thermal treatment that we'll discuss is blanching blanching is a unit operation carried out at up to 100 degree celsius using hot water or steam at or near atmospheric pressure so normally we perform it uh, at atmospheric pressure and blanching is a very common phenomena that we normally uh, do in household practice also for reducing the surface microbial contamination from the product and also mainly to reduce the enzyme activity but blanching alone
cannot be treated as a uh, thermal processing that can uh, that can prevent the food from uh, long term uh, microbial contamination. It mostly used as a pretreatment prior to freezing, canning and drying. The primary purpose of blanching is to destroy the enzyme activity in fruits and vegetables because this enzyme cause certain undesirable changes during storage or uh, during exposure to um, temperature sometime and this cause browning and off flavor development to the fruits and vegetable. So, therefore, this enzyme such as polyphenol oxidase etcetera should be inactivated prior to storing or freezing, canning, drying etcetera. So, apart from the main purpose that is destruction of enzyme activity, there are other function of blanching. These are reducing the surface microbial contamination. It also preserve the color, flavor and nutritional value and it imparts softening of vegetable tissue and that facilitate the filling into container because most of the time after this um, uh, thermal pretreatment that is blanching, we use this vegetable for uh, storing in a container for drying or for freezing. So, softening of the tissue helps in filling those containers. Removing air from intercellular space prior to canning is another important aspect of blanching because this is very uh, important aspects. We need to remove the air from the intercellular spaces otherwise uh, during canning because of the excess pressure generation the cans may be uh, damaged. Okay. So, that is why these are the important function of blanching. Now, there are many method by which we can do the blanching treatment. One such method is hot water blanching which is very common. Uh, in this the food enters a slowly rotating drum which is partially submerged in the hot water the temperature of which is maintained at 70 to 100 degrees Celsius. Uh, water blanching requires longer processing time and also uh, the adverse effect of it is it results in increase leaching of minerals because uh, vitamins and minerals which are water soluble that may drain out or leach out with the uh, water during the hot water blanching. We can see here the system which is used for uh, continuous kind of hot water blanching. There is a conveyor belt is there on which the raw vegetables are put. Okay. So, raw vegetables are coming over this conveyor belt and water will be sprayed from the top and is being heated to desired temperature that is 70 to 100 degrees Celsius by steam. At the end of the blanching treatment it is being taken out and all the uh, nutritional losses that may happen because of this uh, will because of the leaching of water soluble nutrient during this treatment. If we want to measure the requirement of the steam for this processing. So, there is a relation that is the total heat required for this processing is mass of water to be heated into specific heat of water into delta T that is the temperature that we need to increase from the inlet water temperature plus Q L that is the loss of heat and if the loss of heat is 0 Q L equal to 0. So, the whole uh, heat requirement that is will be Q H and then we can calculate the mass of steam M S by dividing Q H by 
lambda. Lambda is the latent heat of vaporization of steam. So, steam requirement would be 134 kg per ton of vegetable for hot water blanching if we consider Q L that is the heat loss is 0. We have considered here lambda at 2330 kilojoule per kg and C p that is specific heat of water as 4.18 kilojoule per kg Kelvin. So, by this we can calculate the amount of heat energy needed and thereby amount of steam needed for this processing. Okay. Then we will move on to steam blanching. So, in steam blanching product carried on a mesh belt or rotating cylinder through a steam atmosphere. Residence time is controlled by speed of the conveyor or speed of rotation if we use the uh, rotating cylinder or drum and it is an energy efficient process because less water requirement is there and uh, since it is a steam. So, leach out effect of the nutrients will be reduced to a maximum possible extent and here uh, a system is there in which we keep the product on a perforated tray and then we uh, send the saturated steam okay, to do the blanching treatment and uh, after the certain time after the required time of exposure to steam we take out the material from the discharge chute. After the treatment we need to cool uh, the vegetables by spraying cool water and the water flushing is also done in certain cases. The next method for blanching is individual quick blanching that is IQB in that what we do a single layer of product is conveyed through the steam chamber and each individual piece of the product immediately enters in contact with the steam. So, here all the material that we enter so they will individually come in contact with the steam. So, better heat transfer uh, and faster heat transfer will be there and also the uh, effect of the leaching is minimal here. So, the next method that we will discuss is microwave blanching this is comparatively newer technology uh, as compared to the hot water blanching and steam blanching. However, this is becoming very effective. So, this is alone used or in combination with the water blanching used in uh, household application and industrial application and it further reduce the heating time. So, both batch and continuous systems are available for microwave blanching. We know the principle of microwave heating and it is very rapid volumetric heating because the electromagnetic radiation is absorbed by the moisture in the fruits and vegetable and these are high moisture products. So, very easily they will uh, absorb th those radiation and because of the uh, dipole rotation the friction. Uh, frictional heat is generated which is causing the volumetric heating and the quick processing is being done in the microwave blanching. It improves the product quality and minimize the wastewater production that may happen in case of the hot water blanching. <coughs> Moving on to the next thermal preservation technique that is pasteurization. Pasteurization is a relatively mild heat treatment in which food is heated to less than 100 degree Celsius. So, since we are heating it uh, to less than 100 degree we can perform this pasteurization operation at ambient temperature or atmospheric, uh, atmospheric pressure. Pasteurization is 
normally used for the destruction of all disease causing organism that is uh, being used like pasteurization of the milk or the destruction or reduction in the number of spoilage organism in certain food as for example, vinegar. Pasteurization does not kill the spore formers. So, it is only effective for disease causing or pathogenic microorganism. And we uh, can also mention that pasteurization uh, since it is a uh, mild heat treatment, it can store the product for uh, lesser time after processing. So, after processing within few days we need to consume the pasteurized product otherwise the contamination will be there and uh, pasteurization is uh, better use with combination of several hurdle technologies. For example, after pasteurization it can be immediately refrigerated or the condition uh, may be lowered like uh, pH may be lowered. So, this kind of processing uh, in combination with the pasteurization is effective for storing of the uh, food material. Pasteurization is also effective uh, when we want to remove the, uh, uh, the uh, in the surface sterilization if you want to do for the uh, beer or wine. So, those cases pasteurization is effective. The two group of microorganism that survive the pasteurization temperature used in milk are thermoduric and thermophilic. So, in milk we basically uh, do pasteurization to kill the mycobacterium tuberculosis, listeria, monocytogens and salmonella. We also perform pasteurization uh, in case of uh, uh, liquid egg to remove the salmonella and uh, these two microorganisms that is thermoduric and thermophilic uh, are uh, as the name suggests that thermoduric means they can withstand the high temperature that is uh, given to the food material during pasteurization. However, thermoduric organisms cannot grow at high temperature, but they can live at high temperature they can withstand that. Whereas, the thermophilic microorganism can grow and sustain at higher temperature. <clears throat> so, pasteurization uh, there is a typical time temperature treatment is required because we know that as we increase the temperature the effect on the microorganism will be uh, higher. So, that is why we can maintain a combination that means, at, di at different temperature different duration of time will be there which is the exposure time in the pasteurization temperature. We can see that there is a chart for different food material uh, that milk if we want to pasteurize it at 72 degree Celsius the time requirement will be 15 second. For the ice cream milk pasteurization ice cream mix the temperature and time combination is 80 degree Celsius and 20 second. For tomato juice temperature will be 118 degree Celsius time is 60 second. For honey it is 71 degree Celsius 300 second. Fruit juice it is 88 degree Celsius and 15 second. Soft drink 95 degree Celsius 10 second. So, this is the time temperature combination that we need to maintain for pasteurization of these food products. And we can fix the uh, duration for any particular product based on its composition and the index microorganism that we want to kill in a particular process. Because every microorganism may have different resistance to temperature. Coming to pasteurization methods, in bottle pasteurization where tightly sealed bottles filled with raw milk are held at 63 to 66 degree Celsius for 30 minutes. Then bottles are passed through the water sprays of low temperature to cool the product 
in the bottle. Because as we mentioned that uh, after pasteurization we need to cool it to the refrigerator temperature for better storage stability. In batch pasteurization milk is heated in water jacketed vat at 63 degrees Celsius as we have mentioned here and held at that temperature for 30 minutes. So, this is a setup this is a setup where this is a steam jacketed vat where we have provided an agitator to have better heat transfer coefficient and uh, there is a inside the jacket there is a steam that is giving the required heat treatment for pasteurization of the milk. There is an inlet line through which milk is coming into the container and there is an air space heater. There is a uh, recording thermometer to measure the temperature of the milk sample. There is indicating thermometer and air space thermometer. So, here we first uh, heat this unless it achieve the desired temperature of pasteurization that is 63 to 66. Then we hold it there for the duration of 30 minutes and then gradually we heat this, uh, gradually we cool the temperature to the refrigeration temperature. So, after batch pasteurization, we will see now the continuous pasteurization. So, in continuous pasteurization, in high temperature short time method, milk is heated to 72 degree Celsius for 15 second and cooled to 5 degree centigrade or below. This is the continuous pasteurization system. First, we will look into this tank that is the balance tank where all the milk collected in a processing section is stored first that is called the balance tank and from here milk is going to the first regenerator that is called the raw regenerator and here the temperature of the inlet milk is increased to some extent and then it is going to the heater. So, in the heater it is being heated to the desired pasteurization temperature that is 72 degree Celsius okay. and from heater it is going to the holding tube. The design of holding tube that is the dimension of holding tube and the flow velocity is being selected in such a way. So, that by the time it reaches from the outlet point of the heater to the controller sensor, it is being exposed to the desired time period at this uh, temperature that is 72 degree Celsius. So, it will take 15 second from uh, this point to this point to reach from this point that is the exit of the heater to this controller, it will complete the requirement of the time exposure time. So, after that there is a controller sensor that will sense or measure the temperature of the milk and if it is uh, attained if it has attained the desired temperature of pasteurization then it is being sent to the pasteurized regenerator and from there it is sending to the cooler. If it does not achieve the required temperature this flow diversion valve will redirect this inlet milk to the balance tank. Now, in the raw regenerator section since it is regenerated that means, this inlet milk is being heated by the exit uh, exit milk that is already being pasteurized. So, the heat transfer between two fluid happens in the heater 
steam or hot water is used to heat the milk and again in the pasteurized regenerator this heated milk is being cooled by the exit cold milk that is already chilled by the chill water in the cooler and finally in the cooler it is uh, chilled by the chill water so this is the whole process that we perform in hdst pasteurizer so we have discussed the component that is the regenerator heating and for cooling and uh, these are the actually plate heat exchanger we will discuss in detail about all this heat exchanger in the uh, next chapter and flow diversion valve that we have discussed that its function is to control the direction of the flow of milk that is whether it is going to pass from the holding tube to the regenerator or it will be directed back to the balance tank for reprocessing. Next treatment is the sterilization. So, the purpose of sterilization is to cause destruction of all microorganism including spore formers. So, the product is heated above 100 degree Celsius usually 110 to 121 degree Celsius and kept for a defined period. Now, the question must come that how we can heat it beyond 100 degree. So, obviously, we need to increase the pressure at atmospheric pressure the uh, maximum temperature of the water that we can enhance is 100 degree Celsius. Now, in this case we heat this or we perform the sterilization by saturated steam first uh, we use the saturated steam and then we can increase the temperature we can use the superheated steam and the condition we normally maintain at 121 degree Celsius is 15 psi pressure 15 psi that is pound per square inch for 30 minute duration ok. So, this is how we perform the sterilization. Now, what is commercial sterility? So, commercial sterility implies less than absolute destruction of all microorganism and spore, but any remaining would be incapable of growth in the food under existing condition. That means, we cannot fully nullify the uh, number of the microorganism, but certainly we need to lower the probability uh, than 1, so that uh, that cannot uh, contaminate the sterile lot of the food products. Okay. The next higher treatment that we can give is ultra high temperature sterilization, where we maintain 135 to 150 degree Celsius for only few second. Now, uh, as I as I told that the microorganism has a defined definite sensitivity to temperature. If we increase the temperature, so the destruction of the microorganism generally may enhance. So, they have a temperature sensitivity that is defined by the z value. We will discuss the z value in detail in our next class, but to understand the effect of this heat treatment on the product quality, we want to inform here is that the z value that is the temperature dependence of microbes is much more lower than the uh, temperature dependence of enzymatic destruction or nutritional degradation. Therefore, if we enhance the temperature to certain degree the microbes can be destroyed, but not the nutrients or enzymes will be destroyed at that uh, higher extent. Therefore, uh, this design has been done that if we increase the temperature and reduce the time combination for sterilization. So, definitely the nutritional effect will be reduced. So, that is why from the sterilization to ultra high sterilization this has been uh, performed. So, this 
this will cause lower damage of nutrition than this may cause by the uh, method of higher temp lower temperature and higher duration. Okay. Also direct method that is in, in contact with the food uh, is higher uh, and has higher efficiency compared to the indirect processing. The most common sterilizing equipment is autoclave or retort. Uh, it is uh, sterilization can be done in batch or continuous operation. High temperature are generated either by direct steam injection as we mentioned or by the heating water up to a temperature over 100 degree by combined steam and water heating. Normally what we do in retort processing, uh, we first put the material inside, close the lid and then we open the vent port from which the air will be taken out and the moist steam that is the combination that is the mixture of uh, liquid water and uh, gas the, that is the steam that is water vapor is mixed here and it is filled in the chamber. Later on we provide more heat to make it from the moist heat to the dry heat and we uh, increase the temperature of that heat we make it in the superheated condition and maintain the pressure uh, for a certain duration. After that when we want to break the pressure and try to uh, take the product out after processing that time we uh, first enter the liquid water into the chamber and also we uh, a vent, we start venting the air through the port and gradually we cool down the sterile product by water spray or water circulation flushing of the water and in this way the whole operation is being done. So, there are continuous rotary sterilizer, hydrostatic sterilizer available. So, sterilized product may be in package sterilized product like canning, retort pouches, seal bottle etcetera. Aseptically processed products are there like tetra pack or combi block fruit juices and soups etcetera. So, in that what we do? The raw product which is commercially sterilized and cool okay, by the continuous thermal processing is being sent to the packaging section and the incoming packaging material that is pre sterilized containers with hermetically sealing. So, they also uh, after sterilization sent to the packaging section and package filling and hermetic sealing is done. So, filled and released in an atmosphere free of contamination that is the whole process is being done aseptically and therefore, it become the shelf stable commercially sterile product and for those product no refrigeration requirement is needed. The other method is canning, this is uh, almost similar to the sterilization uh, method. Pressure canning and water bath canning is done, water bath canning is normally performed for the uh, low acid, uh, water bath canning is done for the acidic food and here we do the hot pack method where we heat food in syrup, juice or water before filling into the jars. Okay. Another is the raw pack where we first fill the jars with raw food, cover the lid with the boiling hot syrup, juice or water. Okay. So, these are the system where we do the canning, there is a jar rack where we keep the closed uh, container and there is a uh, there is a safety valve and there is a counterweight provided on that. There is a dial gauge which measure the pressure and by that we can able to measure that how long we want to keep that there is a venting port also there is a safety fuse. So, all such arrangement is being done during the uh, pressure canning process. So, thank you we will continue in the next class.